Hi, and welcome back to I Am Movies. Today, I'll be doing a recap of the movie Influencer, which was released in 2022. In a thrilling tale of deception and survival, we follow the captivating influencer, Madison, as she embarks on an adventure in the vibrant streets of Bangkok. From capturing breathtaking moments to uncovering hidden secrets, Madison takes her online audience on a journey they won't forget. But when a twisted imposter enters her life, the stakes skyrocket, leading to a deadly game of manipulation and revenge. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions in this gripping movie. Movie. The film opens with a mesmerizing scene, a young girl, her body sprawled in the sand on a remote island beach. As the camera pans out, we hear the enchanting voice of Madison a captivating influencer embarking on a thrilling adventure in the vibrant streets of Bangkok. With each step into her luxurious vacation abode, we witness her gleefully capturing moments, engaging in animated video calls with her beloved Ryan, while imparting insights into Thailand's awe-inspiring history, unveiling the city's culinary delights, indulging in refreshing swims and relishing rejuvenating massages. Madison deftly chronicles her every escapade, swiftly sharing her adventure with an eager online audience. At her place, she video calls her friend Jay. She takes out a box from her bag and finds a card saying, Say thanks to Ryan for me. She reveals a yet-to-be-launched beauty product, making Jay jealous. She expresses her unhappiness about the current situation, as Ryan had backed out at the last minute. Jay admits he wishes he had her life, but had to hang up as he got called. Before ending the call, he tells her to smile more. Smile more. Afterward, she takes a few pictures with the not-yet-launched beauty product and uploads them to social media. At a bar table at night, she snaps photos with her drink. Rupert, a British tourist, offers to help take pictures and subtly asks her out. She inquires about his reason for coming to Thailand, and he mentions escaping the British influence and admiring the attractive women. C.W. joins them and invites her for a walk, which she accepts. They leave together, and as they stroll, she warns Madison to be cautious of seemingly kind guys who may reveal their true nature later. She asks why she's traveling by herself, to which she explains everything. She also explains how magical the country is and how people just sit by the pool all day long enjoying the scenery. The next morning, C.W. takes her to the edge of a cliff to witness the beauty. They take a few pictures and leave. They visit many different places including an elephant sanctuary and a restaurant. While in the restaurant, she takes multiple pictures of her food while C.W. watches her. She eats the food and she immediately falls in love with it. Oh my god. C.W. looks around and sees two guys with which they connect and start to hang out with. They continue to have fun, drinking and dancing after. A while later, C.W. and Madison are walking and talking about the guys and the fun they had. They part ways and they go to their respective apartments. As Madison was going to her room, she checked her bag for her key, but she couldn't find them. On getting to her place, she sees the door open and after looking inside notices that her money, passport and other credentials have been stolen. She files a complaint with the help of C.W. The next morning, she is reading a form with CW, which is to be filled with her details so that she can get a temporary passport to be able to fly back to California, which could take up to two weeks. She seems to not like the idea of being stuck there for two more weeks, but then CW invites her to her place and offers to show her around. You crash with me, I'll show you around. Afterward, she calls Ryan to tell him about the incident to which he gets angry. She then tells him they need to break off but he dismisses it and tells her to wait till morning before they talk but she hangs up. The following morning, they start to explore the city. A boat takes them to an island where they went caving. They continue to explore while Madison writes everything in her journal and takes pictures. Later, C.W. takes her to her mansion of a house while she marvels at the beauty of the place. A while later after settling in and C.W. prepares food, she comes down with an idea of what they should do the following day. C.W. then informs her that she has a surprise planned for them. At dawn the following morning, C.W. takes her to her boat, to which she marvels at the fact that she has her boat. They take the boat out to an island that looks amazing. On getting there, Madison discovers that there is no cell service. At night, they sit by a fire, and Madison realizes it's been ages since she experienced something like that. She mentions her days in the Girl Scouts, gathering around the fire and sharing scary stories. There was always one girl who told the darkest tales, and Madison jokingly wonders if C.W. brought her to the island to harm her. C.W. reassures her that she won't kill her but might leave her behind. She adds that she'd wake up the next morning to find herself abandoned, with no means to survive for more than four days. They share a moment of silence before bursting into laughter, or so Madison thought. The following morning, C.W. follows through on her plan and leaves Madison on the island, stealing her belongings before she wakes up. Three weeks later, C.W. relishes in her takeover of Madison's life. She recounts how staying in the country has been rewarding, exploring and embracing all it offers. Leaving Madison's house, she seamlessly assumes her identity as she navigates through town. Her routine involves capturing photos, manually editing them to replace her face with Madison's, and sharing them online. 
She employs voice modifiers to mimic Madison's voice in videos. Returning home, C.W. enters a room adorned with pictures of her previous victims, adding Madison's image to the collection. Finally, she announces a social media hiatus, all in preparation for her next target. The following morning, she leaves the house and explores until nightfall. On getting back home, she searches for a new target online until she sees Jessica, whom she finds interesting. She begins to stalk her. She tried to strike up a conversation, but it didn't work out so well. The following morning, she does more research and finds out that she supports women who want to find their inner true self. She then pretends to be her fan. Jessica invites her for a drink, and they talk about how to be free and travel the world. Jessica then goes for a picture session where she is being photographed while CW steals her hotel card. While leaving the place, Jessica has to bail for a while but promises to call CW when she's done. Let me meet up with these guys and I'll call you when I'm done. She went into Jessica's hotel room and stole her passport to prevent her from traveling, just like she did with Madison. She then waits outside the hotel as Jessica arrives while she expects her call. The next morning, CW takes Jessica on a trip that leads them to her house. They got there at night and found rose petals on the floor, which CW didn't prepare. While getting inside, they find Ryan with a surprise dinner already planned to wait for Madison. CW was shocked. They get into a conversation about how she is living there, even though it's registered under Madison's name. He then walks away telling them to eat the food if they want. Enjoy the food, I guess. The next day, CW removes Madison's picture from the room of her victims. As she cleans the scattered rose petals, Ryan enters, searching for breakfast. Suddenly, he receives a call appearing to be from Madison, stating that they have already ended things. Ryan insists on hearing those words directly. Unbeknownst to him, it's CW on the call, disguising her voice with a modifier to imitate Madison and push Ryan away. Later, Jessica joins them, and they embark on a beach exploration together. At the beach, as CW fetches food, Ryan and Jessica engage in a conversation. They uncover CW's deception about owning the house, discovering that Madison's place was burglarized, resulting in the theft of her documents. Before they can delve deeper into the discussion, CW interrupts, announcing that their food is ready. Later, they are seen on top of a hill, contemplating when to go back down. After going down, they end up at a bar. Jessica texts Madison to know more about CW, but she notices CW immediately checks her phone, which makes Jessica feel unsafe. She then goes out of the bar, hires a taxi to Madison's place, and packs her stuff to leave with the taxi outside. CW notices she has left the bar and follows her. As Jessica attempts to depart, CW intercepts her, questioning her departure and claiming that she has already instructed the taxi to depart. Suspicious of CW's behavior, Jessica tries to leave but is suddenly attacked and killed. In the aftermath, Ryan arrives with a group of friends, ready to party. He is taken aback by the presence of Jessica's luggage, as she had previously mentioned her intention to leave. CW demands that Ryan halt the festivities. After some persuasion and issuing threats, Ryan finally complies and puts an end to the party. I guess mom doesn't want to hang out. After a while, she takes a knife intending to kill him. But on getting to his door, she gets a notification where she sees a picture of Jessica, with her in the background posted online, and tag in the account of Madison mentioning she is a friend of her. The following morning, Ryan finds CW in the dining room with the food she had prepared. Spotting an almost empty plate beside her, he assumes it belonged to Jessica, who supposedly left early as planned. CW apologizes for her behavior the previous night and suggests that Ryan can continue staying until Madison returns. She then departs. Ryan checks his phone and sees a post by Madison, featuring a man captioned as the new love of my life. Disturbed, Ryan leaves the house and finds a location to take some pictures. CW arrives and disagrees with Ryan's view of bringing out the best in Madison suggesting that perhaps she is now revealing her true self. She also expresses a desire for a man who would go to great lengths for her, believing that if Madison doesn't appreciate such efforts, she doesn't deserve them. See that, then maybe she's not with her. Later that night at a bar, CW discreetly spikes Ryan's drink, causing him to lose consciousness. She takes him home, carefully places him in bed, and stages a scenario to imply they had sexual activity. While doing so, she unlocks Ryan's phone and deletes the photo he posted of Jessica with her in the background. Ryan has a dream where he sees Madison. CW then wakes him up, pretending they had a great time the previous night. To further solidify her deception, she strategically drops a condom on the floor. Taking Ryan on her motorcycle, she brings him to a ferry yard, where he was supposed to depart for home. She gives him the impression that she will miss him. 
She waits until the ferry departs to ensure he doesn't jump off in search of answers. On getting back home, she burns all of Madison's stuff except her journal. We see a flashback of when Madison and Ryan met and played games at an arcade. We also see where he takes a photo of her with a large stuffed bear while he tries to convince her that she could make a lot of money off the internet. Could be a lot of money. By just posting bit photos, Ryan decides not to leave and instead investigates the location where the photo of Madison with the new guy was taken. He interrogates locals but finds no one who recognizes her. Eventually, he encounters Rupert, who points out that the picture is a forgery because the sky in it doesn't match the actual sky during that time of year. A sunny day we've had for weeks. Later, Ryan contacts Jay and inquires about Madison and the photo she posted. Jay reveals that Madison never mentioned anything about meeting a new guy. Suspicious Ryan abruptly ends the call. He scrutinizes a video Madison uploaded and notices a fleeting glimpse of a scar on her face, which triggers his suspicion of CW's involvement. Ryan searches CW's place and discovers Jessica's belongings along with Madison's journal. While reading the journal, he hears CW approaching. Ryan swiftly incapacitates her, tying her up. During the interrogation, it is revealed that Ryan had been secretly tracking Madison's activities. He confronts CW about her actions towards Madison, brandishing a knife. CW claims she can lead him to Madison's whereabouts. But I can take you to her. She takes him to her boat, but seizes an opportunity to push him into the water unnoticed, then proceeds to drown and kill him. She places his lifeless body in the boat and returns to clean up before posting a fabricated message online, accusing Ryan of multiple cases of abuse towards Madison. The message triggers public condemnation, including from Jay I never trusted him. and results in the severing of all of Ryan's business partnerships. While looking through his bag, she finds an engagement ring that he wanted to give Madison but she wears it without any remorse. The next morning, CW navigates the boat toward the remote island where she intended to dispose of Ryan's body. However, to her shock, she discovers that the fire is still burning and she knows Madison is still alive. She searches the island but fails to find Madison. Suddenly, she is struck from behind by Madison, rendering her unconscious. As Madison escapes, she reaches the boat and comes face to face with Ryan's lifeless body. With a sense of urgency, she leaves the island. When CW regains consciousness, she realizes she is now stranded alone on the desolate island. What do you think of the movie? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit the notification icon to get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and see you at the next one.